Hello and welcome, this is Alistair Christie and for this tutorial we're going to write our first multi-tiered data snap application. As per usual we're just going to get stuck in and do it. Let's begin by creating a new VCL forms application and we'll call it client and to that So we're going to add a second application to our project group and call it server. And to our server, we're going to add a remote data module. And we'll call it BioLife. And now I'm going to do something really bad. I'm going to add a, a tQuery. Um, this is so that we can, uh, normally you wouldn't use the BDE in a new application, um, but we might as well create an application using the BDE so that we can migrate away from it. And if I could spell, call it QBioLife. Um, uses DB demos and just select star from BioLife. Now, to make this accessible to the rest of the world outside our server application, we need a T dataset provider and I'll call it. DSP BioLife and set, set the data set to our BioLife query. Now let's double check this actually works. Yep. Okay, so now we need to um, uh, register our server um, as an ActiveX control. So our, our server is now registered, which means that if we go back to our client project, and let's actually call this call it a client, uh, I can add a connection, and I'm going to use a, a decom connection for now. And I was going to say, set that to localhost and the server name to our BioLife example that we created, our BioLife server that we created uh, a few minutes ago. Um, we also need a T client dataset. And while I'm at it, a T data source. So let's call this DS BioLife and connect to our client data set. Call our client data set CDS BioLife and set our remote server to our DCOM connection. Okay, and now we can look at if we drop down this provider name list box. We notice we've got DSP by life and our server has started up. Um, and what I'll just do, well actually let's, before we do that, add our DB grid. Oh, let's make this a bit bigger as well. DB memo, DB image, and DB Navigator. And so all those up to our BioLife bio life data source. Um, 
that one is notes. And graphic. And if we actually set this active to true, it will populate um, with our data from the server. Um, but I'm going to set that to false and connect it to false. And in the form create, ah, open. <laughs> And let's also add an action list. In our action list, add a new standard action. And if we come down to our data snap, and another button. Action is apply updates, and let's actually call it okay. And let's now run that. I can change that and apply updates quit out, run it again, and you'll notice it was persistent, um, and what have you, um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today, um, but we've got a lot more to cover. Oh, yes, indeed. So um, until next time. We wrote two applications, firstly our server which provides the data and the client that displays it. Our server consisted of a dataset component for which we used a tQuery and a tdataset provider that allows the outside world to access our data. Technically speaking we also need a tSession component to allow multiple clients to connect to our tQuery which is a VDEism that hopefully you won't need to worry about. On the client side, we have our tdcom connection that connects our remote data module and allows us to hook up the provider to the tclient dataset, which in turn is hooked up to our tdata source and all our controls talk to that. Writing our first data snap app was very easy and we glossed over many of the details, which I hope to pick up in later videos. And let's face it, it's a matter of whether I can be bothered. So thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope my brief instruction was useful and I'll see you again shortly to cover more about DataSnap.